Meniere's disease is a disorder of the inner ear that affects balance and hearing. So when we think of Meniere's disease or Meniere's syndrome, we must look inside the ear. Okay, And uh, the ear externally, we all know what it looks like. When we look inside the ear canal, we end up uh, seeing an eardrum, uh, which moves when the sounds travel within the ear canal. When the eardrum moves, the three small bones also move, and the purpose of those of this motion is to have some fluid move inside that uh, snail-shaped organ inside the ear called the inner ear. So um, we see here both the snail-shaped and a labyrinth of canals up here, which is all filled with fluids. And this uh, cave filled with fluids in, in the ear, actually in the skull, is all um, wrapped up by bone structure. So it's not a flexible structure. What we know of Meniere's disease is that the fluid embedded inside that bony labyrinth expands. There's an expansion of fluid. So what happens when the fluid expands? Well, it damages the membranes, the cells, that are located inside that, uh, that structure itself. And those damages, lesions, cause the symptoms that we know with Meniere's disease. So when the fluid expands inside the inner ear, we uh, witness four symptoms that patients experience and report. First one is vertigo. Um, we also have an associated hearing loss. Also a sensation of oral fullness or pressure inside the ear. And a fourth symptom is a tinnitus. So a sound that's generated inside the ear that only the patient's ear. So when we look at the ear, the inner ear, Again, we have that snail-shaped structure down here and also the labyrinth of canals up there. And it's all connected and filled with fluid. And those two parts are respectively responsible for hearing and balance. So this is why we have symptoms that affect both hearing. There's a hearing loss first that we see because the hearing part is damaged. And also the patients experience vertigo because the upper part, which is responsible for balance, is also damaged. And therefore the, the patients will experience vertigo attacks when the fluid expands. Also, uh, the sensation of fullness of pressure is directly derived from the expansion of fluid that the patients feel. And the tinnitus that people hear obviously is related to the hearing part of the inner ear and very often when there's a hearing loss the tinnitus is a related symptom it goes along with hearing loss so all of this happens by um, episodes or uh, phases where the when the fluid expands and all the symptoms kick in all at the same time vertigo the hearing drops at the same time, the tinnitus gets louder, and the fullness sensation also uh, um, kicks us in at the same time. Those attacks usually last a few hours, and they resolve spontaneously. Is there a total recovery after the first, uh, the first attacks? Close to. The hearing might come back, uh, the vertigo will stop, the fullness will go away, the hearing loss will come back almost to a normal level, but uh, there might be a residual hearing loss in between every episode of attack. And the more that the, that the uh, attacks occur, the, res the residual hearing loss will add up. And 
on a chronic phases uh, of, of the disease, the hearing loss will remain. And this, so the patient is stuck with a, a chronic hearing loss. And surprisingly, the, the, the severity of these vertigo attacks will tend to fade over years. And at the chronic phase of the disease, we have just a chronic hearing loss and less and less of those head spinning episodes. The disease starts usually with one ear and over time, over years, both ears can be affected. So first we want to confirm the diagnosis of Meniere's disease. How do we do that? Well, both the audiologist and the ear, nose and throat doctor uh, will proceed to a, a, an array of diagnostic tests to confirm that we are actually dealing with Meniere's disease. The two first um, tools that help to confirm the diagnosis is first the case history. So a lot of those symptoms are purely subjective. So that means that only the patient feels the fullness and hears the tinnitus. So, and, and experience vertigo as well. So the case history, which can be performed by either an audiologist or the ear medical doctor, uh, help to guide, well, are we dealing with Meniere's disease? Also, the second tool that's really uh, crucial to confirm the diagnosis of Meniere's disease is a hearing test. Because the hearing test is very um, typical of, of Meniere's disease in the sense that it affects the low frequencies and it affects the inner ear. Now, with those two tools, most of the time we have, for, for clear cases, we have a confirmed diagnosis. Now, of course, in the medical field, Sometimes things are not as clear cut and complementary tests can help to confirm the diagnosis. And here we can talk of vestibular myogenic evo evoke potentials, electrocochleography, nystagmography, video head and pulse tests, or other tools that can help to confirm the diagnosis. There is a general consensus that there is no definite cure to Meniere's disease, but there are certainly ways to preserve the quality of life of patients with Meniere's disease. So patients must turn themselves towards uh, their ear medical doctor and to their audiologist to take care of both the vertigo aspects of the disease and the hearing aspects of the disease. The ear medical doctor will certainly recommend to reduce uh, caffeine, alcohol, tobacco, salt, and stress. If those are not sufficient, medication can also be prescribed. Now the hearing, we're talking about First, the hearing loss, which can uh, hinder communication, conversations, obviously, and also the tinnitus, so the roaming sound that only the patients hear, but which is certainly, which, which can be distressful. So for this, what can be done? Well, most of the time, we patients uh, turn themselves towards hearing devices. And for those, we are talking about two kinds of hearing devices, hearing aids and hearing implants. Uh, hearing implants are only for severe cases where uh, severe hearing losses that can no longer be helped with hearing aids. Hearing aids are non-invasive devices that are worn on the ear and inside the ear but do not involve and require a surgery, whereas the implants do. So when there's a hearing loss, the hearing uh, aid will help by amplifying sounds that are lo no longer heard. Um, and also by fixing the hearing loss, most of the time we can attenuate the tinnitus. So the roaming sound that's 
inside the ear. I would like to share three pieces of advice uh, to patients who have a diagnosis of Meniere's disease. The first one um, would be to establish and maintain a close follow-up with uh, your audiologist and your ear medical doctor so that the progression of the disease is well tracked and accordingly the interventions uh, the, the, uh, the, the actions that are taken to control the disease follow the evolution of the disease. The second piece of advice I would like to share is uh, that I invite patients to, to join uh, support groups uh, through social medias. Uh, nowadays, this is the, mo the, the main avenue for this. And the point of this is, yes, to share tips on how to control the disease, but mostly and mainly is just to, uh, to acknowledge that you are not alone experiencing uh, this reality. And the third piece of advice that I'd like to, to share is that each patient must be self-aware of their own triggers. Pay attention to uh, what triggers the attacks so that you can uh, expect and, and know in advance what, what to avoid and what to do to, uh, to maintain um, the best quality of life possible. Mm -hmm.